22 long rifle. Yes, we don't shoot enough of it, it seems. So I have some, I think, pretty good videos shooting the 22s, but we just haven't, uh, haven't brought them out lately. And by the way, I'm Hickok 45, in case you didn't recognize me. This is a Taurus Model 94. It is made of stainless steel. It has a rubber grip. And what else? That's a little red plastic insert there, doesn't it? So in terms of material. But this is uh, uh, a new gun. Picked this up uh, yesterday, in fact. And thought it, uh, we'd been talking about one of these or something like this for quite a while. A little nine shot uh, 22 revolver. A lot of fun. You know, the, the semi automatic uh, 22s are so popular. And I have, they, they generally hold 10 rounds. Uh, maybe fewer rounds in some cases, I don't know. But so a nine or 10 round revolver and 22 long rifle, of course, you can shoot shorts or longs, whatever you can find. Are, uh, it makes a lot of sense. You can only load nine or ten anyway, and so uh, that becomes your magazine, your cylinder. You load it, shoot. Kind of fun. Uh, nice heavy gun, and uh, quite a quite a little piece of uh, hardware. Some of these guns and revolvers can be really cheap. There's a wide range of 22 revolvers, partly because of the the low pressure of the, of the cartridge. Uh, you can get by with, I guess, making one out of pot metal almost, and uh, and then on up to some of the really uh, much more expensive Smith and Wessons. Uh, they have a really nice one uh, like this, kind of. It's, uh, it's like twice the money, and uh, but it, it's a really nice gun. And you can always tell the difference, I think, uh, between Smith and Wesson and Taurus when it comes to revolvers. Some may disagree, uh, but uh, but this isn't bad. You know, for a little plinker, and uh, it's a little stiff, I think, because it's new, but uh, it seems to be working okay. It is a four-inch barrel. It's uh, like I said, it's the Model 94. Uh, holds nine rounds, double action, you know, or you can fire, cock the hammer and fire single action. So, has a, a safety lock on the hammer, comes with a little uh, wrench. Oh, I didn't bring the box out, I was going to show, that's okay. Yeah, my gun reviews are sort of non-gun reviews anyway in a lot of ways, but that's really the only thing that was in the box other than the, uh, the manual was the little, uh, it looks like a little Allen wrench type thing and you put it in it, but it's not an Allen wrench and you uh, turn that uh, clockwise to lock it and then the hammer won't uh, won't cock at all so it just kind of locks up the gun okay so what we have here i just brought out some uh, different kinds of ammo here some old antique boxes i had and uh, this is the federal what's what's in the, the cigar box here instead of cigars uh, is the federal i picked up some of that at walmart over the months and we fired some of this in it yesterday we haven't tried any of the remington I think they probably will work better in a revolver than they tend to work in automatics. We get a lot of malfunctions with the, the Remington. But, uh, yeah, 22s are kind of that way. They, they, they're they dirty. They fire, uh, I say, in a dirty way. They're just a lot of residue. And so just about any automatic and, and almost any gun, after you fired 30, 40, 50, 80, 100 times, you start sometimes getting, getting a little... Uh, Oh, I don't know about malfunctions necessarily, but they just don't work as smoothly. It's a dirty round. So let's take a few shots here. Uh, we're just going to plink a little here at uh, mostly at close range, probably. Uh, I have a hard time even hearing when I hit like the animals over there, and of course they're not going to knock them over. So I tend to, to throw 22 rounds at uh, oh I don't know swingers and lightweight targets that are likely going to make a little bit more noise. So let's just play a little bit. I think we know where to hold this thing. We haven't shot it very much yet. Let's see. I guess we better take out the soda first. Oops, oops. That's a light trigger. That one went off before I meant for it to. Very light. <laughs> if I can get him again. Whether I hit him or not. Okay, let's get the other one. Woo! Ah, that's what we wanted to see. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. Great. Great. Got a couple of tin cans there. To load up again, try those tin cans some more. You know, the uh, when you think of plinking around with a 22, you just think of tin cans. How American is that? You folks in uh, other 
countries where you have a lot of restrictions on firearms and things and have for decades and decades, centuries, uh, I'm really sorry you've not had that uh, part of uh, our heritage, you know, growing up, plinking at tin cans with a, with a 22. It's just, just part of growing up, especially as a guy, and uh, oftentimes even as a girl. You know, it's one reason we shoot the, uh, the soda first, for those uh, who uh, maybe are more astute and uh, perceptive among you, we tend to pop the uh, sodas when we start these because ricochets from the steel sometimes will do it for us if we don't. So uh, we like to pop those early. Let's try some more tin can shooting. Get the other one. I'm gonna knock him off there. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Nice thing about these is you don't have to worry about picking them up to reload. But uh, yeah, shooting a tin can is just uh, we thought we'd add that because that's just part of it. Uh, putting a tin can on a fence post. That's just what I recall doing when I was uh, hanging out with my dad and my uncle on my uncle's farm. We'd go set a tin can on a post and, and plink at it. That's just what we did. All right. Let's see if we can hit a plate. Doesn't move them much, does it? Yeah, it is a 22, not a lot of force. Not a lot. We'll go across the hill here. Uh, it seems the, the sights seem to be pretty much on. We have not messed with the sights at all. And uh, it seems to be at about a six, six o'clock hold, as best I can tell. And uh, let's take a, let's go out there. I think we can hear the gong. If a bullet strikes it, that is. Bypass one there. It's a little rough. Uh, I'm about to sided the gap between the uh, forcing cone and the cylinder. Might be you can't really see it there because it's dirty. But uh, with a revolver, if the gap, the space between the forcing cone and the front of the cylinder is really tight, that's where it'll start to hang up a little bit. Sometimes I've seen that on a, everything from a Colt single action to a Smith double action. So I'm kind of watching that. I noticed after you've shot four or five rounds through it, four or five cylinders full through it, it uh, in cocking single action, it'll want to hang up a little bit without you have to kind of help the cylinder turn. So we're keeping an eye on that, seeing what that might be. So I think what let's do, let's put, let's see, we better do that last though. We're going to shoot some shorts. Let's shoot another cylinder of these uh, long rifles in it. For those who don't who realize, uh, these are 22s, of course. They're just really short, and you can shoot them just fine, just as shooting a 44 Special and a 44 Magnum or a 38 Special and a 357 Magnum, the case is just shorter. That's the only difference. However, and maybe I've gone over this before, you have a long chamber here, and uh, you know if you start out shooting a lot of these, so if you're going to shoot some of these, it's probably advisable to shoot them you know, later in the shooting uh, session because these go all the way to the front of the chamber so all your dirt's going you know on out whereas these think about it they're not as long so the uh, case may uh, just i don't know protrude halfway through the chamber so you're getting all that grit and dirt actually in the chamber 
which needs to be pretty clean for this to actually be chambered, okay? Now, hopefully you followed that. <laughs> okay, so we'll shoot those last. Now I have fired those, you know, first and, and it's done okay, but if you're gonna have trouble, uh, that could cause it. Uh, let, me, let me try that rifle target. I actually hit it yesterday when I was trying this gun out, that smaller plate over there. bottom of it. I can't hear it if I do hit it. There we go. We did hear it. <laughs> well, I didn't have that much trouble yesterday, but I'm not sure I'm as steady here now. Boom, all right, so let's try some shorts. Uh, the sights actually seem pretty much on with this baby, so uh, I can't blame it on the sights. Could blame it on too much coffee or something this morning. We're having a cloudy day here in uh, Middle Tennessee, so we're actually doing a video a little bit earlier than we normally do. Usually we have to wait till later in the afternoon until the sun gets right. Okay, now these are some short babies. I think I'll take my earplugs out. It's about the only time I'll do that. You'll, you'll hear why. <laughs> I'll go for the gong. Now, it might take a little while. We might have to sit down and take a break, wait for the bullet to get there. up a little bit more. I got away from me. That trigger is really light. Okay. Got to hold on top of the gong to hit with a short, looks like. Okay. Let's not miss it now. Yeah. Look, let's try a couple more of those. That's pretty neat. These are really, as you can tell from how long it takes them to, to get there, they don't have a lot of power. So uh, I do need to hold up with those just a tad I'm towards the top of the gong. Little beady bullets. Little beady bullets. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's pretty neat. And we saved a bottle here. We got one close by here. You know, we try a short on it. Okay. Now, I'm assuming it'll go through it. I'm assuming this is not dangerous. <laughs> you know, shooting a soda bottle with a bullet you wouldn't think is dangerous, right? Uh, these things are very weak. All right, let's, uh, let's shoot it near the bottom, see what happens. Oh yeah. Went through both sides. I heard it hit the uh, barrel. <laughs> okay. False alarm on that. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Uh, I have shot with an even big old 45 slug, a hard tree before, a dead tree, and that, that thing bounced off and hit the ground. You know, so you do have to be careful. Uh, you assume a bullet will go in about anything, you know, wood or you know, something like that, but you know, you can never be too careful. And I've had, I've had enough incidents, well, or enough experience that you know, I don't take too much for granted. There are some trees, by the way, y'all remember this, if you're shooting a shotgun or, or anything that's not like really powerful, like I don't know, lighter 38 special, 
45 cold, just reasonably light loads, those sorts of things, 44 special maybe, maybe even 45 ACP with a hard cast bullet. Uh, if you're out, just don't get too close to a really, really hard tree. Sometimes they'll, they'll bounce off that sucker if it's some old hard elm or ironwood, you know, something like that. So, so keep that in mind. So let's load up just one more round here. Again, the 22 is always a lot of fun. And uh, it's obviously fun to, to, to plink with the uh, semi-automatics. It's probably what I use most often. But uh, I don't know, there's something special about a revolver any revolver and uh, I, I really do like a, a, a high capacity 22 caliber revolver there's just something pretty neat about it you know you get about the same capacity and uh, they shoot just fine what have we not shot here inexpensive fun to shoot I don't know how you'd ever wear it out. This gun's the kind of gun that I expect after it's uh, old six months or a year of shooting, it will loosen up a lot. The action will be smoother, and it, it feels kind of tight right now. So we need to break it in, and uh, that's what we've been doing. And it's a lot of fun. Taurus 94, nice little gun. It feels really good, by the way, uh, just to complete the gun review here. The grip is not all that big, but it, it fits. Uh, that's just the stock grip that came with it. It really fits the hand well. The gun's well balanced, and uh, you know, I guess that's the only Taurus I have. I had a, a 38 Special a long time ago, but that's the only one I have right now. So it's not a bad looking gun, and it feels good. That barrel length is just right for that frame size. It's a small frame size, it's almost a J frame. Uh, I was testing it in some holsters, and it seems really big for uh, any of the K frame holsters. So it's a fairly small gun, but it's, it's got a little heft to it. It's plenty big, as far as I'm concerned. So. Nice little gun. One thing uh, you want to do, I think, for you folks that particularly are in carry states and or in law enforcement, military, whatever, where you carry a handgun and you rely on it, is uh, go out and enjoy these old 22s all you can. Have fun with them uh, when you go to the range. But I would, I would recommend, because you're getting such a different feel, you know, I mentioned this in an FAQ, you get such a different feel for recoil and, and all that, your expectations, your flinch, and anti-flinch uh, the anti-flinch part of your brain whatever it is that we use for that uh, you got all that uh, programmed and, and everything so you, you know what it's going to feel like maybe it's not the very best thing at the last gun you fired maybe you don't shoot for a week or two it is a little 22 so i always recommend one of the last things you do is uh, maybe take a few shots with your carry gun or you know, whatever caliber that you normally carry so that your your muscle memory and everything when you leave the range is uh, is you know geared to that. I don't know, it might be a good idea. Not that not that I always do that, but I try to. See what I mean? Those first two or three shots, I'm not sure where they went. <laughs> this thing felt like a cannon going off in my hand. So I always recommend that, okay? Even though I don't carry this thing, but I just thought I'd get it out today. Boom. So not a bad idea to, to do that before you leave the range. Shoot something bigger or uh, something you're more likely to be carrying. All right? So that completes uh, lesson uh, one on uh, that subject. So anyway, glad you guys could come out and uh, take a look at the Taurus uh, Model 94 with us and uh, spend a little time on the range just plinking some really small, lightweight bullets. We've had fun. Hope you have too. Signing off. Life is good.